In this knit time lapse, you'll see me unravel and repurpose this sweater to knit a new one. I'm gonna share everything from web blocking to how I wrote the pattern and just talk about the process and my end result. So if you're looking for something to knit and relax to or just something to play in the background, then please keep watching. Okay, so the reason why I'm unraveling this sweater is because it felted a bit. It's as simple as that. It's made up of good yarn, which is 100% merino wool. I like the color and it has the right seams for unraveling. Plus, I was never really a fan of these neck seams here. I felt they always poked out at the sides whenever I wore it and it always took away from the beauty of this sweater. Now for the pattern writing. I started breaking down the pattern very carefully because once I unravel this, I will not have a reference to refer back to. After I got the ribbing down, I checked to see if there was an increase row because the main portion of the body is slightly bigger. I couldn't find any increases so assumed the balloony look is from switching to larger needles for the body. I'm going for a bottom-up piece because it makes most sense to me. I'll be replicating this sweater instead of creating an entirely new one because I like this sweater and I don't really want to lose it. So basically, I started by counting the ribbing at the hem. This was relatively easy because each rib counts as one. Then I recorded the cast-on number. Next, I counted how many rows were in the ribbing. I also could have just measured it, but I wanted it to be exact. After the ribbing comes the main stitch pattern, which is the fisherman rib. I had to take a moment to watch a tutorial and learn how to do this. I also had to learn how to do left and right leaning decreases in order to shape the armholes. To me, the areas of decreases looked pretty obvious because the ribbing brings it out. I have to say that my greatest concern was doing the sloped bind off because I wasn't really sure how to do it with fisherman's rib. I assumed that I'd maintain the fisherman pattern and just follow the steps for a sloped bind off. And this ended up being the right approach. Okay, so the neck is a really big part of this design. It's what makes this sweater the Montpellier sweater. I want to knit my piece without the massive side seams at the neck, so I figured that I could just knit it in the round. It was as simple as that. For the sleeves, it was pretty straightforward to break down. I simply counted the number of stitches around the opening to get an idea of how many stitches I'd have to pick up. Then for the tapering of the sleeves, I counted the number of rows between each decrease to tell me how many rounds I would have to knit before doing a decrease. Please let me know in the comments if you found this breakdown helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button. Now I'm pulling out not one, but two seam rippers <laughs> because one is a little more sharp than the other, which might be useful later on. I'm gonna give the voiceover a break now, but if you're wondering how I unraveled this piece, I'll insert some text describing what I did. If you do have any further questions, please write them in my comments and I'll answer them once I see them. But for now, please enjoy the music and what I've prepared for you.
So I wanted to point out a few things before moving forward. When I was unraveling, I noticed that the yarn was coming out from two strands. This is something I've seen before, so I knew how to deal with it, but I have to say that it can make the process a little more tedious because I have to focus on not tangling them, and also they're kind of chasing each other across the rows, so I had to focus a lot on making sure one strand was ahead of the other the entire time. Otherwise, it'll get stuck like what you're seeing now. The other thing is that I didn't use fabric softener this time when wet blocking. I wanted to see how the yarn would behave without the softening product and to see if it actually makes a difference. I got a comment saying that fabric softener shouldn't be used to soak yarn at all and I was totally shocked because somewhere along my knitting journey I had picked up this habit of using softener as I had learned it as a tip many years ago. I'm glad to report though that plain water works just fine, as you can already tell in the before and after. So now finally going back to the swatch. I actually took a moment to closely assess how the stitches were unraveling and discovered that the right side rows are knit one and purl ones and the wrong side rows are purl one slip one. This two row repeat looks almost identical to fisherman rib. So I decided to try it out and create a quick sample swatch. Did it work? Yes, but there were side effects. The more fabric I produced, the more it curled into itself. So long story short, I went back to a real fisherman rib stitch pattern. By the way, let me know in the comments if you like these explanations. This is how the piece is looking so far and at first I started with that two row repeat I mentioned earlier. But I realized the wrong side of the work is the prettier looking side that I wanted to be at the front. It was at this point when I decided to just go with the fisherman rib because I didn't want to deal with wondering if this two row repeat would work out for me or not. Although it was a little disappointing that all the time I put into it so far was now gone, I figured that unraveling this would be better than settling. So I unraveled up to the ribbing, picked up the stitches again, then switched to the slightly larger needles to begin the fisherman rib stitch. I got pretty far with it before I started assessing it one more time. I know I do this frequently, but I've learned that it's better to take a moment and check my work to make sure everything is going well. Can you already guess what I'm thinking here? At this moment, I realized that perhaps switching to larger needles may not have been necessary because fisherman rib is already quite stretchy. Plus the fabric is looking kind of holy. And since I wasn't too far ahead, I decided to unravel again and go back to the smaller needles for the rest of the entire piece. Some people enjoy watching me unravel, while others feel it can be avoided with better planning, like measuring twice and cutting once. Some feel that constantly fixing mistakes is me trying to be perfect. What I think is trying to be perfect is knitting something from beginning to end without making any errors at all. They say perfection is an illusion, and so knitting without mistakes is also an illusion to me because they will happen. But the important thing to remember is that they can be fixed. This is why I deliberately show this in my videos. I would love to know how you feel about this, as all of my knitting time-lapse videos include me unraveling and fixing mistakes. Is this something you can relate to, or am I just a novice? Please share your thoughts in the comments. So I ended up marking all the errors that I've made to just physically see them. I started feeling a little frustrated with myself because of all the mistakes I was making. And despite multiple tries, I was unable to correct the fisherman rib stitch, which only fueled the frustration. Although I was able to eventually disguise them, I still couldn't get over the fact that I knew they were there. In retrospect, I feel like the frustration was sort of the pivotal point for me to make a decision. I could keep knitting and pretending, or I could wipe the slate clean, start over, and get over my mindset and do better. My goal is to aim for a high quality piece in order for me to feel like all my effort in repurposing this yarn has paid off. This is how I personally bring meaning and purpose into my work. 
I know I'm losing a lot of time by doing this, but an unravel is going to be the sacrifice for the exchange of a higher quality knit. I also started using a row counter. Using the row counter taught me to never underestimate the power of simplicity. Initially, I was reluctant to use such a basic tool to help keep track of odd and even rows, but it really prevented me from making a mistake. If I lost track, I could just check the row counter to see if it was an odd or even row and determine if I needed to do a knit one below or purl one below. This is what my mistakes stemmed from, so I found an easy but effective solution, and it made all the difference. Also with the row counter, I was able to feel my progress. Sometimes knitting can feel like it's going on and on, and I only notice I've gotten far after a substantial amount has been knitted, but the row counter helps me see the progress mounting up row by row. Once again, I will take a break from this voiceover. I usually don't talk this much in person, but please continue watching and if you have made it this far, please hit that like button to help me reach more people. Thank you.
after finally surpassing the point where I was before, I came to a conclusion that I shouldn't rush my knitting to try to keep up with a timeline. The primary reason why I kept making mistakes was because I was zooming through the pattern, which caused me to become sloppy with my knitting. In the end, I wasted more time trying to fix my mistakes when I should have just slowed down and put more effort into knitting quality fabric. So I learned a really important lesson here. So for the sloped bind off, mine is a little more straight across compared to the original sweater which had a higher slope. I binded off 4 stitches each time, but I think if I wanted to replicate the original, then binding off 2 stitches each time would be the way to go. As I took a moment to step back and examine my work, I started feeling more optimistic again. I thought about how far I'd come and how much closer I was to reaching my goal, which is to become a knitting wizard. I want to be able to knit anything that catches my interest, whether it be through pattern writing or just pure analysis. Okay, so now going back to the knitting. I'm continuing to work on the back and both sides are identical, so it was more effortless to knit up. I didn't have to think too much about it. I'm also still using a row counter to help measure my progress. I have always noticed from past experiences that it's much better to do a loose bind off when it comes to the shoulders. This way the edge is more flexible and soft. So here I'm alternating between the regular needle and a slightly larger one as I do the sloped bind off. When it comes time to binding off, I'll switch to the blue needle which is the larger one and then go back to the smaller needle to knit the rest of the work until I need to bind off again. You could just use the main needle to do the bind offs, but instead of knitting with your regular tension, you would do it very loosely. So now I'm going to transfer stitches for the neck. I'll be using this 2mm circular needle to knit the neck in the round. And I was most excited about this part because I really didn't like the thick neck seams from the original sweater. This will be completely seamless and I'm really glad that I was able to find a solution for this. Before I got started knitting in the round though, I decided to seam the shoulders first just because I want to keep the pieces together so I can comfortably knit the neck. But after finishing this, I noticed how it wasn't as stretchy as the rest of the body. This can really affect the way the sweater weblogs and its dimensions. Fisherman rib has a lot of stretch to it and as a knitting tip, it's important to match the flexibility of the fabric when binding off. Sometimes I find that binding off first and then seaming the pieces can create a stiffness at the seam because everything is being fastened twice. I redid the bind off off camera but with a really big needle this time to try to compensate for the flexibility. But in the end, I still felt it wasn't enough stretch so I decided to use the three needle bind off instead. This way the piece will be binded off together and only once. So I know this might seem like a crazy thing to do, but I'm about to unravel this entire project because I'm starting to notice how the upper half ribbing looks a little more enlarged. Probably because this was the area where I knit back and forth, whereas the bottom was knit in the round. This is something that can happen when switching between back and forth knitting and knitting in the round because the tension is different. And I know that now that this observation is obvious to me, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. But how am I going to fix the tension, you know what I mean? And it's not like I want to unravel everything unless I feel like it would be for the best and in this case, I feel like it would be. I always try to create the best pieces I can, so I did feel conflicted between wanting to continue and finish or to start over. I wish I could have found a way to knit this entirely in the round. This way the tension would be even all throughout, but I couldn't figure out a decent way to do this. The moment the thought of starting over evaded my mind, I could not escape it. Like I mentioned before, I had already felt like I was running on low, but I was able to persevere and endure it for this long. At this point though, I was drained. I kept looking at it over and over again, wondering how I could somehow salvage it. But I think 
What ultimately made me make up my mind was the obvious tension difference between the upper and lower portion. My lack of uploads and long withdrawal from my channel was due to this project. I want to put out good work, if not my best, but I also realized that a good end result doesn't always have to mean a perfectly knit piece. I think maybe I was able to get what I wanted from this in the end. I was glad I went for this project because I learned a few new techniques that I didn't have under my belt before. And even just looking back, I can't believe that I was able to replicate this sweater. So there are a lot of positives in my eyes and it feels reassuring to know that I'm not walking away empty handed. I will have to take a break from this particular project and begin working on something else in the meantime, but I won't forget this. I'm definitely going to revisit this project in the future and do better next time.